See how everything starts off between Marcus Spahnholtz and Victor Larson in this game number one of this Europe Losers Round 12 match. The winner, of course, moving on into the global finals. So lots on the line here as we are going to see the leads for this very first game. Coming out from Victor's side of the field, we do have that stack attacker as well as that Volcarona, that powerful duo that you were mentioning, Adam. And then on the other side from Marcus's side of the field, Thunderous and Incineroar. I'll be curious to see how Victor executes the Volcarona and Stack Attacker combination. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty solid if they can work well together. But this Thunderous could, could put down good damage on either of them. Uh, that said, I think the Stack Attacker isn't super threatened right now and is going to be in a good position to, to try and at least fight back uh, a little bit or maybe just use its natural bulk and set up a Trick Room. Yeah, could set up a Trick Room here or even just honestly go for something like a Dynamax really early on. We've seen Stack Attacka just be able to do so much work with a lot of that offensive pressure. And, and wait a minute, we are seeing a Dynamax come out from Victor's side of the field. I, maybe see the Volcarona too, that could be an option. But I just feel like with Stack Attacka holding on to that Life Orb, Stack Attacka is definitely a really great option for this match. But I find it super interesting that we are seeing this Dynamax happen from Stack Attacka without the Trick Room. Just because of how slow of a Pokemon Stack Attacker really is. Stack Attacker usually wants to set up a Trick Room or get its partner to set it up first, and uh, this could be a dicey turn for it there. A very smart protect from this Volcarona, but I'll be curious to see exactly what this Stack Attacker does as now, ooh, it's taking a lot ooh. of damage from this Thunderous. Yeah, that superpower ended up bringing that Stack Attacker pretty low to about one third of its HP, but Stack Attack is able to fire back with a max rock fall, and it's going to go right into a Pokemon that's going to take that for super effective damage, and Thunderous gets one hit knocked out just from that max rock fall. That's not a great trade if you're the Thunderous. Yes, you've got good damage down with the superpower, but you also got knocked out, and Marcus kind of at an early disadvantage that way. Not only is he down a Pokemon, but he's given an attack boost over to the Stack Attacker, which makes up for the Intimidate drop that the Incineroar placed on it at the very start of this game. Uh, smart protect there, making sure you don't get caught by the fake out, maybe a double target, but the sand set up by Max Rockfall will break a Focus Sash, a likely Focus Sash, on this Volcarona. So uh, it's not gonna have the same sticking power it might have, and it could only redirect potentially one attack. Uh, we are going to get to look at Marcus kind of eyeing up his options that he may want to deal with the Volcarona with. Uh, but they are a little bit obvious and a little bit telegraphed. So Victor uh, still in a pretty good position here on, on being able to just go with this stack attacker um, if he can avoid attacks. And, and that's going to be absolutely key considering how low the stack attacker is after that superpower. Yeah, already at such low health, Marcus is kind of looking at that not really as the main focus of the damage either. You could already see that that Urshifu was really hovering over that surging strikes to be able to make, find its mark into the Volcarona on Victor's side of the field. But that's kind of interesting to me. Leaving the stack attacker alone feels like it could be very dangerous. Uh, you don't want Stack Attacker just throwing out three max moves that hit and do super effective or at least neutral damage. Uh, that's never going to be a good time if you're playing against it, and, and the beast boosts are going to be there to mitigate, intimidate, parting shots, stuff like that. Um, that said, you know, the Volcarona realizes it, this could be a bit of an issue and just decides, not for me, I'm, I'm not dealing with this Urshifu. I'm sending in my own Urshifu to answer that. Yeah, and that means that Urshifu is going to be taking the Surging Strikes instead, and definitely a lot better than what the Volcarona is going to be able to do. Like, look at that! Even with the critical hits coming in from the Unseen Fist ability, Urshifu is taking that very, very nicely. So we'll be able to hold on and really stack that damage, but instead of always using a Parting Shot into Stack Attacka, already lowering the amount of attack that can be coming out from that Pokémon. I mean, Surging Strikes, you need it to be hitting super effectively. Not very effective, even though their critical hits uh, aren't exactly what you want. Uh, but this switch is going to be interesting, depending on the targeting of the Stack Attacker in particular. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this Max Rockfall now coming out from Stack Attacka, and it was going into the Incineroar slot, so Metagross taking that attack instead, and definitely a lot better than what that Incineroar would have. Oh, most certainly. And the sand is actually quite essential here. Of course, we talked about how it interacted with the Volcarona, but now the Urshifu, which we know has a Focus Sash, doesn't have access to that anymore. So while the Rockfall may have hurt the Volcarona, it's hurting the Urshifu uh, almost just as much uh, and being able to kind of play around that way. So uh, a lot of interesting interactions here, but the Metagross Urshifu combination puts down a lot of pressure. There's no Trick Room set up and this, this Stack Attacker could potentially get knocked out if it is targeted. Uh, that said, there's an Urshifu on Victor's side as well, which can fire back itself. So 
Uh, I think both players, even though there's a Pokemon disadvantage for Marcus, still in a very good position to, to turn the tide of this one in their favor. Yeah, but I'm really worried about the fact that Victor still has that fourth and final Pokemon in the back that hasn't been revealed yet. But given the fact that we've been playing in a little bit of a slower Trick Room mode, wouldn't be surprised to me to kind of see something slower on that side of the field as well, maybe like the Glass Rear coming out as a potential fourth option. But Marcus has to get through all of these other Pokemon first. So we are going to see this Dynamax come through onto the Metagross, which I feel like is such a great start for Marcus to really get the ball rolling with this Pokemon. Absolutely, and Metagross wants to be able to land super effective hits and, and boost its stats as well. I think something that can't be undervalued in the move pool and, and options that these Metagross have is what it can do when it comes to boosting up its stats and, and going from there. Uh, that said, the Volcarona switched in, made this Urshifu look a little bit silly in this one. <laughs> Yeah, Volcarona taking that close combat instead. And that means that that defense and that special defense are going to fall, but also the flame body's going to no. proc here. That's going to burn Urshifu and really mitigate the damage that it's going to be able to output. But Max Quake coming in now will be able to do enough damage to clean up this Volcarona. And while we're going to get the special defense boost here and get the knockout, I'm still worried about that burn on the Urshifu. Yeah, the Urshifu is very limited in what it can do now. The burn is not a stat boost that you can really work around, right? It's not something that, that the critical hits will help out against. And the Urshifu takes a lot of damage in this turn from the Max Steel Spike as well. So a nice defense boost uh, would maybe help out this stack attacker if it was a little bit healthier. But if it's not getting attacked, it's perfectly fine to, to weave in attacks of its own. Uh, the Urshifu is going to take a lot of damage between turns and it's kind of out of the game for Marcus. So... I think a lot riding on this Metagross, knowing that the last remaining Pokemon is, of course, the Incineroar that he, he decided to lead with. Right, Incineroar can still pressure a lot of damage onto the Pokemon that Victor has. So definitely relying on that Incineroar to really make some moves here, not only to use Intimidate to lower the attack stat of that stack attacker, um, as well as the Urshifu that's on the field, but also just kind of playing around what could potentially be in the back. I feel like that's going to be such a big fast factor. But we are going to see Urshifu come back out onto the field now for Victor, and Dynamax is now over for the stack attacker. It's going to be in a limited form now. Yeah, the Pokemon count leveled up at 3 to 3, um, and this stack attacker done with its Dynamax, where Metagross still has two turns remaining, is definitely a, a, a big difference, I think, if you're in Marcus's shoes. This Metagross is going to be key to his win condition, and even though it took a little bit of damage on the way in, uh, it's still looking pretty healthy, and uh, it's going to take a, a big ask, particularly from a Pokemon that's not Dynamaxed, uh, to be able to work through that one. So we'll see exactly uh, how this stack attacker decides to play out the, the game. And, uh, and go from there. Uh, I think the stack attack is still a focal point, even though it's, it's very, very low on health. Yeah, but right now we're going to see the Surging Strikes come through first, and uh, if Marcus's Urshifu was planning on attacking this turn, it's not going to be able to after getting knocked out by just two of those Surging Strikes coming in from Victor's Urshifu. Now, with that Pokemon off the field, it's time for Metagross to attack. Steel Spike now going right into the Urshifu on Victor's side, and not really doing too much damage, but most importantly, getting that defense boost. A defense boost could be very important depending on what the fourth Pokemon on Victor's team is, something we've not seen. And with that Trick Room, I got a feeling we know exactly which one it is. That's kind of a reveal for a little bit later. And that's maybe, uh, you know, Marcus thinking ahead, thinking not only is the defense boost going to be good, maybe trying to call like, a Protect or something on the uh, stack attacker uh, and hope that it, it doesn't go for that. But Marcus is down to his last two Pokemon. He's only got one more turn of the Dynamax on Metagross remaining. And, and you know, the Trick Room's... Uh, a little bit tricky. I, I think, you know, he has to be careful of the potential fake mm -hmm. out this turn, uh, fake out and then a follow up target. Uh, but then the Incineroar has to just watch out for that Urshifu. This Urshifu is not burned and it's still very, very scary. Absolutely. So maybe going after the Urshifu there just to be able to fake it out and make sure that it's not going to move this turn. But yeah, with Incineroar on the field now, you do have that Intimidate drop onto the attack of both that Urshifu and that Stack Attacka, but I'm really questioning about the target priority right now for Marcus's Metagross. The Stack Attacka has been on the field since turn one, and with the Trick Room active, that Stack Attacka is gonna be moving mighty fast. Stack Attack has kind of been left alone, particularly in that last turn where you think the Metagross maybe could have gone after it, um, just left well alone. It's going to be sticking around a little bit longer uh, with this Protect. So yes, the Fake Out will land on the Urshifu. That's you know, stopping it from doing anything this turn. It's not really the focal point in this one. 
No, well, Metagross is finally going to try to fire after that stack attack up, but it, the Max Quake's not enough. The Protect was brilliant there to be able to allow stack attack to stay on the field just a little bit longer. And stack attack is going to get a turn kind of unimpeded in its trick room uh, to try and, and fight back a little bit there. So really uh, good time for the stack attacker to cling on for another turn. And of course, uh, finish up the Dynamax turns of this Metagross. Uh, the Metagross did get two special defense boosts and one defense boost. So it's nice and bulky um, for pretty much whatever it gets thrown at. But those physical attackers are getting a slightly better deal than any potential special attackers here for Victor Larson. So uh, plenty of game left to play. Uh, I think both players kind of trying to jockey for a perfect end game position. Mm -hmm. And it, maybe for, for Victor, that end game relies on Trick Room a little bit. And, and that's something that he's running out of time on and may not be able to be given the chance to, to do once again with this stack attack and just so low. Yeah, Trick Room is going to start expiring pretty soon. So you've really got to pay attention to what you have in the back and whether or not it is going to be able to take advantage of that Trick Room. We will see Urshifu on Victor's side go for a Protect here as Takataka is going to move first, getting that Rock Slide off and being able to do a decent amount of damage to that Incineroar. But as you could tell from the double Intimidate drop, it's really not doing that much and the Life Orb Recoil is going to be enough to be able to knock it out. And, uh, well, because Urshifu protected, the flinches don't really matter here, but it's kind of nice to see that they can happen when you need them. Yeah, I mean, it's a good little confidence builder, and there's the confirmation. The last Pokemon will be the Glastrier for uh, Victor, and now he's really up against it to make sure this, this turn is capitalized on. The turns that are left in the Trick Room are very, very important for him here. So uh, he's going to have to do a lot of work with this Glastrier. He doesn't have access to Dynamax it, which a lot of players do like when they're playing like a late lane. Glastrier, and uh, there's not an option. This Urshifu is kind of up against it in the Trick Room. Uh, usually prefers to play out of that, uh, but everything riding on, on Glastrier right now. Yeah, Glastrier is going to be such an impactful Pokemon for Victor, and you've really got to make mo the most out of the Trick Room turns that are left here, because there aren't that many left for this Glastrier to really be able to make its mark and do the damage that it needs to do. We can see Glastrier actually work really, really well outside of Trick Room, but we have Trick Room active right now, so High Horsepower is going to be what moves first on the field, and it will be enough to knock out this Incineroar. So hey, Marcus is in Yeah, and look at that, Chilling Nay activating as well. Glastrier taking advantage of that Trick Room really, really well. Uh, Metagross could fire back, but the Stomping Tantrum heading towards Urshifu and bringing us down to a one versus one endgame. Metagross versus Glastrier, no Dynamax available for this one. And a little bit of Trick Room remaining. Uh, something to be cautious of is, of course, the item choice on these Pokemon. Both well known to be carrying the weakness policies. Trainers do know about this based on the way the team sheets work. And that's something that's going to be a bit of a mind game as we get to the end of this one. Yeah, you really don't want to pop that weakness policy. But you know what? It could be a really interesting end game here is that because this is the last turn of Trick Room, maybe just kind of waiting to see whether or not Marcus actually allows the weakness policy to get procced on this glass rear. Even with a chilling nade boost, I'm not sure whether or not an attack coming out of the glass rear, even if super effective, is going to be enough to knock out this Metagross. So you could see just a little bit of a waiting game here, and we are going to in fact see that Protect come through. Yep, Glastrier actually letting that Trick Room expire, uh, protecting for this turn, and he sees the Metagross Iron Head. Now that's going to be key with Glastrier holding a weakness policy. If he knows he can take the Iron Head and fight back, then he's going to be in a really good position to, you know, he, he actually wants the Metagross to move first and give him the weakness policy boost. Uh, so it's both trainers don't want to activate the weakness policy too early. Uh, they want to only fire off a super effective attack if it's going to be guaranteed a knockout. So uh, certainly an interesting one now. They, they kind of both want their weakness policy first, which is why I think Glastria is very comfortable enough to say, you know what, I will just wait until Trick Room's done. Then you're going to activate my weakness policy before I attack. Uh, and that's absolutely key here. Don't forget, Metagross has a defense boost from an earlier max steel spike, which even though it looks mm. pretty tempting and in range, still could be a bridge too far for this Glastria. Oh, well, Stomping Tantrum does come through, which is not going to be a super effective attack, so it's not going to prop that weakness policy. But here comes the high horsepower, and Metagross takes on with two health. It's going to get the weakness policy boost and move first next turn. 
Yeah, that could just be disaster for Victor in this game. He didn't get the knockout he needed and he thought he'd be able to get with the high horsepower. He hands over that weakness policy boost, which now means as soon as this uh, Metagross connects with a super effective attack, it's, it's game over for Victor. Uh, there's the Metagross locking in the Iron Head. Very quick decision there from Marcus. And Glastre isn't given the opportunity to fight back. Able to get knocked out by the Iron Head and put Marcus one game closer to making those global finals. I am just mind blown by the end game scenario that we just witnessed because it really was about whether or not a player was going to get the weakness policy activated. And with that critical survival for medical, something like the glass gear in the back, so it's a little bit safer. I, I think both trainers uh, know what they need to do and, and know what they need to do differently in this one. Uh, so let's head into game two. Let's see if they make any changes to their leads or if they just try and run it back and maybe play out that end game a little bit differently because it was so close. I think both yeah. trainers are going to stick uh, with what they went with and maybe just mix up the way that they play a little bit. Well, leads are the exact same as game number one. For Victor, we do have Stack Attacka and Volcarona on the field. And for Marcus, we have Incineroar and Thunderous. So this is a really interesting next couple of turns because if Marcus can start to run away with this game, then he takes the set and will be able to move on to our global finals. That's exactly the prize that he's going to have his eye on, but I don't think Victor's just going to give it to him quite that easily. Probably going to make him work for it a little bit and, and maybe change up how he plays with this Volcarona. It was really quite low impact in the first game of this set. You know, it, it came on the field, it protected. It did get the flame body uh, down onto Urshifu. That was pretty essential, but it didn't redirect any attacks and, and the switches were good. I think they were very positive, but they didn't show exactly what Volcarona could do. So uh, certainly some considerations there. And this game's already changed a little bit by the way the first turn played out. Yeah, with the double protect coming in on Victor's side of the field, just protecting for the Focus Sash on the Volcarona from the fake out coming out from in the Incineroar, and then also just protecting Stack Attacka instead of Dynamaxing right away. I think that's a really key difference from this game versus the first game. That's definitely a big indicator that Victor's changing how he's going to play the game. I think not Dynamaxing immediately, maybe looking for a trick room a little bit earlier than he had in the last game uh, is going to be very key for him here. Um, and he's not relying as much on the stack attacker. He's not Dynamax yet, so he could be throwing Dynamax on a different Pokemon, something like the Glastrier, so it can take a hit and weakness policy and get a knockout all in one. Uh, so plenty of options there. And Thunderous doesn't even try the superpower, knows what happened last time and, and doesn't want to deal with that. Yeah, so Metagross is coming out on the field a little bit earlier than what we saw in game number two and Rage Powder now coming out from Victor's Volcarona just to be able to keep the stack attack a little bit more healthy. Uh, but Incineroar not going for damage this time around. Ops for the parting shot will be able to drop the attack and special attack, but most importantly pivot so that Marcus can bring something else out like the Urshifu to be able to really put on the pressure offensively. I, I think the combination of Metagross Urshifu is super offensive and uh, certainly something that is, is going to cause a problem. But while he, uh, Marcus is making all these switches, Victor's just able to set up his trick room. It's come through way earlier in the game uh, and could play out a very different game plan. Yes, the leads were the same, but already these first couple of turns are drastically different from both players. Yeah, and I think that's something that's really interesting about Metagross here in this situation is that Marcus's Metagross is really different than a lot of the Metagross that we've seen in the meta already. Opting for the Rock Slide is one of the pieces of its moveset. I think really makes this Metagross a lot stronger against Fire-type Pokemon like that Volcarona as well as Rotom Heat, which has seen a surge in the recent meta. It really is a, a pairing that deals with fire types very comfortably. You've got the rock slide of Metagross on its own, but if it's not, if it's partnered up with this Urshifu, the Urshifu can do that work for it with the surging strike. So plenty of options here on how to deal with this Volcarona, and I think the Volcarona knows that it's going to be the focal point of this turn. If it didn't, it's just made sure of it with the Rage Powder. Right, and that's going to draw away the attention from the stack attacker to be able to fire off this rock slide, which isn't going to be super effective. So it's just going to do just a little bit of chip damage here. But wow, that rock slide was so impactful, bringing Volcarona down to its focus sash there. And yeah, that's uh, even with the rage powder, 
Oh, but Urshifu flinches! Yeah, Urshifu unable to follow up immediately on this turn. So the Volcarona is still on the field, and the Volcarona is going to take at least one attack away if it decides to Rage Powder again. That attack likely going to be the Aqua Jet from Urshifu, and that's just a little bit of pressure off that you're not getting a, a Surging Strikes coming through from the Search for or a close combat into something like the Stack Attacker. That's mm -hmm. just a little bit of wiggle room to play around in if you're Victor here. So a uh, very different game after a few turns and, and looking uh, probably a little bit healthier for Victor. I mean, the, the one thing you could complain about in that last turn is he didn't get as much damage down with Rockside, but he did get a flinch on the Urshifu, and that is exactly what you want to see. Right, and that meant that Volcarona gets a chance to stick around for one more turn and take the brunt of another attack away from its partner, Stack Attacka. But Stack Attacka doesn't want to stick around the field, even though the Trick Room is up and active. In fact, it's going to be Urshifu taking its slot on the field, and it's time for Dynamax. Marcus is going to go ahead and hit the go button here, and probably Dynamax this Metagross and just really get the ball rolling on some of those defense boosts, as well as this damage. Yep, the thematically correct Heavy Ball giving that one away. Uh, very, very good look on the Metagross, but it is the focal point of this team. I mean, Urshifu uh, functions very well without it. Thunderous can Dynamax as well, but in most cases, I think Metagross is the choice. Uh, as mentioned, that Urshifu does have to throw an attack at the Volcarona out of respect for the Rage Powder, oh. and to make it worse, it gets caught by the Flame Body. Once again, that's two for two on Volcarona's Flame Body on Urshifu, and uh, this Urshifu kind of out the game for a little bit now. Is that trade-off going to be worth it, though? I guess it remains to be seen with the rest of this match playing out, but Max Quake coming through from Metagross is going to be able to boost up the special defense and also be able to do just a bit of damage to that Urshifu, but a smart switch from Victor really saved that stack attacker. Keeping that stack attacker safe, absolutely essential. And uh, the Max Quake getting the special defense boost, not only did it not do enough damage to be that impressive, uh, but the special defense boost probably won't help out against the remaining Pokemon on Victor's side. The defense boost from something like a Max Steel Spike would have been a lot more impactful as the rest of this game goes on. Uh, Victor does still have a little bit of his Trick Room remaining, is of course able to bring in something that can capitalize on that very, very well. And I'll be curious to see if it's a Stack Attacker again, or maybe he tries to weave in the Glastriate a little bit early and make that end game board position against the Metagross uh, a little bit more of an earlier game problem than it was last time. It really feels like Victor is saving Dynamax and trying to outstall Marcus's this time around, where as Marcus kind of got the last laugh when Victor really did Dynamax that stack attack is so early on in the game. So I really appreciate this adaptation that Victor is taking, just saving and preserving this Dynamax for a little bit later. But it is going to be that Glastrier as the fourth and final Pokemon in the back for Victor. And that means this Incineroar could really do some work here with those Intimidate drops. Intimidate drops are going to be key here when it comes to uh, dealing with the potential huge damage output from these Pokemon. If you don't have a defense boost on your Metagross, then why not just get an attack drop down onto the Glastrier and, and even the Urshifu and, and just, you know, try and help out a little bit there. Uh, it's not quite as impactful as a burn is, this Urshifu looking uh, a little bit useless on Marcus's side, not being able to do uh, the requisite work of, of a big, important damage-focused Pokemon like Urshifu as it's, it's forced to leave. Yeah, Urshifu is going to return to its Pokeball in favor of that Incineroar. So here are those Intimidate drops onto both Urshifu and Glastrier on Victor's side. And I feel like that's going to be really impactful to kind of stunt the damage that's going to be absolutely coming out of this Glastrier. Yeah, the, the Glastrier is, is the big focal point. Uh, and I think Victor realizing maybe his mistake in game number one of not saving the Dynamax for it, uh, now looking to be able to do a whole lot more work. So we'll see what it's able to put down uh, in regards to max moves. Are those max moves going to be as important? And are they going to target the right locations? Uh, it looks like Victor may have learned uh, a little bit of something from his previous game, realizing how much damage he's going to need to do. And a nice max knuckle there into Incineroar means uh, it's an attack boost for both of them, uh, which could be pretty disastrous. It makes up, of course, for that Intimidate drop, which could have been so important. Ooh, well, this time around, weakness policy is absolutely going to be in play for Victor as we do see the max steel spike come through from Metagross, boosting defenses, but we'll pop that weakness policy, and that could be a huge difference maker in this game number two. But before we see whether or not that's going to happen in the next turn, it's surging strike time coming in from Victor's Urshifu. And after we saw all of that damage from the max knuckle hit Incineroar, we will see the surging strikes 
connect as well. Berry proc though, so will restore a little bit of health using the Figgy Berry, but all these critical hits, Incineroar is not lasting through those. Yeah, the berry brings you back, but it, it it's if you've got two more hits left, uh, very, very good. And I like that turn a lot from Victor. The combination into that slot really says, okay, I think you're going to switch. Uh, and when it when you do switch, I'm just going to get a knockout for your troubles, of course. Uh, you probably wanted to see the knockout on something like the uh, the uh, Shifu, um, or rather the knockout taken by the Glastrier um, onto maybe the uh, Shifu, which even burned, it can be annoying. Mm -hmm. But, you know, getting that completely taken care of is a very big momentum swing for Victor. I think he has to look at the last turn of his Trick Room and make sure he gets maximum value out of it. Absolutely. The Trick Room is going to be so, so important to continue to utilize to Victor's advantage. But now that we do see the Arshifu in the mix here, is Metagross going to be able to survive long enough to be able to actually get off another super effective attack into this Glass Drear and have Urshifu be able to follow up to be able to secure the knockout? A lot rides on this next turn because someone's losing a Pokemon here, probably. That's a Glass Drear with its weakness policy boost, too, so you've got to respect it, particularly in the end of this Trick Room. You can't just ignore it. Um, you can try and protect around it, but there's only so much you can do with that one. And if you try and protect and keep yourself safe, uh, this Urshifu may be able to capitalize on that and, and just ignore that, of course, uh, with its ability. So really kind of cautious play could get punished here from Marcus. It doesn't look like we're getting any protect this turn, but the trainer's just absolutely going for it. Well, Max Knuckle is going to be coming out from the Glass Drear, and it goes right into the Urshifu, and that's going to be a knockout. Look at how little damage that Aqua Jet also did to the Glass Drear. Ooh, and you're also getting an attack boost now for Victor's Urshifu from that Max Knuckle. So whatever this Urshifu is going to be able to do this turn, I think it's going to be pretty impactful. But let's see how this Metagross is able to fire back. Max Steel Spike now really respecting this Glass Drear, and it is enough to secure the knockout. Yeah, I mean, the Glass Drear was terrifying, and, and I think that's actually a fine trade if your markets. Yes, you lost your burned Urshifu. That is annoying, but you immediately got rid of the Glass Drear who had... Not only its weakness policy boosts, an extra boost from Max Knuckle and its chilling nay boost. And that was going to be the focal point at the end of that turn. Uh, you couldn't let that stay on the field for too much longer. And giving up your Urshifu for that, probably fine overall. Uh, I think maybe the Glastria could have targeted a little bit differently, got a little more damage down. Uh, but it wasn't to be. Um, and, you know, it set up a lot. But it also got out at the last turn of Trick Room here. So uh, Victor down to his last two. Uh, the Urshifu and Stack Attacker combination. Uh, facing off against the Metagross and Thunderous. It's two for two, and it's going to be another photo finish, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Metagross versus Stack Attacker here uh, really is going to come down to the wire. What I really have on the top of my mind is, does Victor try to put the speed back in his favor by setting up another Trick Room, or just try to go for some raw damage where, you know, Metagross is really low, so... This could be a prime opportunity to try to knock it out here, but you also have to worry about that Thunderous. This game really uh, now relies on the Stack Attacker, and the Stack Attacker is in the driving seat if it can get a Trick Room up and it wants it, that's fine. Um, and then would be able to maybe just work through the team slowly with its, you know, its Rock Slides and, and other options. Uh, that said, you know, we knew from game number one that the Thunderous uh, deals huge damage to the Stack Attacker. Stack Attacker isn't going to be Dynamaxing and getting a bigger health pool, so the Urshifu is also at risk. Uh, just the move pool alone on this Thunderous, really problematic. And, and if the targeting is wrong after this Protect, uh, this could be a real tough turn for Marcus. Well, the Wild Charge is going to go right into the Protect there, but Stomping Tantrum comes out from Metagross, and that is not enough to knock out Stack Attacker. But Stack Attack is able to fire back with a Rock Slide into both Pokemon. Thunderous going to be one hit knocked out here. And it's not super effective against that Metagross, but we'll see how much recoil damage actually comes through from the Life Orb. Uh, where Beast Boost is going to be activated first. Yeah, Beast Boost goes through. Um, the Stack Attacker loses some of its health, but oh. not enough. So clinging on there means Marcus is really up against it. This Metagross does have defense boost. It is going to be able to try and fight back a little bit, but it's still going to be, uh, you know, having to think about where it goes. And those critical hits from Urshifu make life a whole lot easier. You can't ignore the Urshifu because it'll just critical hit you a few times with Surging Strikes. Um, and you, you can't really ignore the stack attacker because it's just got a beast boost. Well, Urshifu's going to be moving first here. 
will be going with the Surging Strikes after this Metagross, and it looks like the Surging Strikes is going to be enough with just two hits to knock out Marcus's final Pokemon. So Victor, taking this game number two and tying up the series, we have a real series on our hands, and it is a photo finish to see who is joining our first two players in the Europe Global Finals. Yeah, essentially making the wrap up of this bracket a best of one game. Uh, it's a best of one with a lot of information, so it's not quite a true best of one. Yeah. Over to the Glastrier, but it was well traded and well dealt with as well. So um, Glastrier was uh, very important, I think, in that game and the way that it was played around. And, and now that's something that Marcus is going to be very well aware of and, and very thoughtful of uh, as we move into game number three. Well, let's go ahead and get right into it. One of these trainers is going to move on to the global finals, and it all comes down to this final game. Let's see if anything strays from the formula here as we do see those Pokemon enter onto the field. It's going to be Stakataka and Volcarona coming out for Victor, and Urshifu Thunderous uh, for Marcus. That's a nice change. Not seeing the Incineroar is, is kind of, I think, nice there for Marcus. I mean, he's got it in the back, and... Uh, we, we can see he's got the exact same four Pokemon, just a different order. Um, I like Thunderous Urshifu as a combination. I think it provides a lot of offensive pressure um, and can really make your opponent uh, think and, and move their board in response to that. Um, and it just provides something a little bit different that I don't know if the Incineroar was doing so effectively in games one and two. Incineroar was certainly putting in some work though with the Intimidate drops and things like that just to be able to kind of stunt some of the damage coming through, but it wasn't nearly as much cycling as what we saw in game number one. And with the Stack Attacka also leaving the field a little bit earlier for Victor in game number two, it was a little bit scary for that Incineroar to kind of stay on the field here. But Metagross coming back in early once again as we do see a Rage Powder now come out from Victor's Volcarona just to be able to take the tension away but surging strikes this could be very disastrous coming in from this urshifu as even <laughs> one look how much damage that does yeah it's not gonna need all three to get there for the knockout ignoring the focus sash obviously with multiple hits really well done there by marcus to kind of acknowledge that and say you know what i think i think this volcano is gonna try and buy some time and uh, i'm just gonna go after it immediately with the surging strikes stack attack of fires back but it's pretty underwhelming considering that we just saw an immediate knockout on this volcarona yeah, oh. I, I kind of wonder whether or not Victor could have set up for a trick room there, but at the same time, you know, is Glastrier in the back? That's something that we really don't know yet for Victor's game plan. So looking at the fact that Stack Attack did go for some damage here, maybe was really helping to get that Thunderous or potentially get that Incineroar on a switch in. Catching either of those on the switch in would have been great, and, and the Metagross is, is the premium option there that it doesn't really care about it uh, either way. Um, of course, the stack attack's taking a little bit of damage from its, its life orb, and that's something that may help out. I think the, the decision is going to be a tough one here for Victor. Uh, we are going to get to take a look and see if he's bought the same four. Obviously, his lead is the same, but this would be the game if I was him to, to try and mix things up and, and bring something a little bit different. And there is something I was curious to see if we get. <laughs> uh, Galarian Moltres is a very good answer to the Metagross. Metagross yes. has been super popular already in this new kind of format that we're playing. And Galarian Moltres just answers that so nicely with its, its dark flying typing. Well, the other thing about this Galarian Moltres that I find super interesting is that it's holding on to a Citrus Berry, which is a more unique item that we don't get a chance to see too often on Galarian Moltres. But what it provides is a lot more sustain for this Pokemon. And when you activate Berserk after dropping the HP below half, you're also activating the Citrus Berry to bring yourself back up above half. So you can get multiple Berserk boosts in a single game. I really like seeing this this activated. And Metagross knows that this is not the time nor the place to be sitting around on the field and hoping you can do good work. The Incineral switch in, very important here, landing uh, you know a nice Intimidate down as well. This stack attack is kind of just letting them rack up. And with that in mind, it's just decided no more for me, thank you. I'll be on my <laughs> way. Yeah, that means that we see stack attack now leaving the field for Urshifu instead. And what's this? It's Dynamax time. Victor is going to be able to really push the gas here, and that's going to be that Galarian Moltres finding that Dynamax factor, and we really get a chance to see this Pokemon shine. Uh, this isn't the time you want to be using that, though. You want to be doing that in front of something like the uh, like the Metagross, where you could really go after it. Uh, the close combat here, it's not really the premium target. You wanted that to head, of course, into the stack attacker, but oh boy, does that do some damage uh, on the way to the Urshifu. Uh, that said, the Urshifu 
is going to be uh, answered very quickly by a max airstream from this uh, Galarian Mulcher. So setting up a nice speed boost. Uh, looks like Trick Room maybe uh, saved for a little bit later, or not at all. I mean, Stack Attack is the only thing that can capitalize on it. So I really like this because Galarian Moltres as a Pokemon is already like pretty fast, but then just one max airstream boost is often enough to be able to outspeed even some of the fastest Pokemon in the format. So Galarian Moltres is definitely set up in a very good position and Victor going for the max airstream instead of something like a max darkness into the Metagross, really, really smart call from Victor. Yeah, really nice adaptation, um, really nice kind of read and, and look into the game. Uh, this Thunderous now, yes, it wants to try and fire back with like a Wild Charge, but now it's facing the Galarian Moltres after a max airstream and has to be conscious of that. Um, you know, if it's going to weave in an attack, there's a potential for it to just take huge damage before it's even afforded that opportunity, and that's not a trade I think Marcus is going to be too willing to make early on in this game. Yeah, trades this earlier are definitely something that you've got to consider, and especially when you're looking at kind of the end game of, of really needing something to deal with that stack attacka in the end. Well, uh, yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful here. So stack attacka coming back on, onto the field for that Urshifu that Victor did have. So we'll see what's gonna happen here as Marcus is going to go for the Dynamax now. And this time around, it's a different Pokemon. It is going to be that Thunderous. Oftentimes when Thunderous is brought to Pokemon battles, uh, when on a team, you do see that Thunderous get Dynamax pretty often and we've seen what it's capable of doing. But Incineroar going for the fake out. Yeah, I really like uh, the, the Thunderous is your Dynamax choice here. Like Metagross isn't going to be the premium choice that it may have been before. So why not put everything on the Thunderous and it's a really good adaptation, uh, particularly when the Thunderous isn't taking uh, much damage in this turn, being completely left alone by the Galarian Moltres and able to start matching up on those airstreams a little better as well. Uh, this switch becomes so, so essential as we see just how good Stack Attacker is at, at taking a max airstream from Thunderous. Yeah, that was very, very little damage. So a great switch from Victor to be able to bring in that stack attacka and save Urshifu from taking the brunt of that damage instead. But now when we take a look at this next turn, you know, fake out's not really an option anymore. And you kind of have to say, well, I got to deal with this Galarian Moltres somehow. So I really like parting shot here. It's one way to do it that, you know, will slow it down enough to maybe save your Metagross later in the game. Uh, I do like that the Thunderous is just max airstreaming, kind of buying that time and saying, well, while you max airstream, I'll make sure the airstreams are matched. And with this pairing on the field, we'll at least be going evens in that regard, uh, making sure the Galarian Moltres doesn't get uh, like an unnecessary advantage uh, that it doesn't need. That said, I mean, don't forget these boosts only stick on the Pokemon on the field. It's not like a Tailwind, which stays throughout. So uh, it could be an interesting one. It looks like Galarian Moltres easing up a little bit on those airstreams and giving Thunderous a chance to at least match uh, the airstream boost that it already had. Well, Max Darkness is going to be coming through dropping special defense, but this is one of Thunderous's strong points. That Defiant ability now able to increase its own attack as it goes for a Max Knuckle into the protected Stack Attacka, which, wow, if Stack Attacka didn't protect there, that's a gone Stack Attacka. I don't know if I'd be willingly handing over boosts with Defiant to the Thunderous. Another reason it's so good as a, a Dynamax candidate is it can take these hits you know it's mm -hmm. that is one of the things it needed a little more health and being able to take those hits is great and so many of course of the max moves uh, do lower stats on your opponent's side of the field uh, that one max darkness handing over a defiant boost and meaning that this stack attack is going to be pretty easy to to pick off at some point later in the game uh, so yes the parting shot also allows a really nice reposition here from marcus as uh, there's the dynamax over for galarian Moltres. Well, this might be a, an okay position for the Galarian Moltres to be in. You could click something like its signature move, Fiery Wrath, which is able to hit both Pokemon for either neutral or super effective damage. And there's not really too much that you can really do in this situation um, if you're Marcus, except try to protect and, and just deal with the Galarian Moltres as quickly as possible, especially after those two max airstreams that that Galarian Moltres did have. It's still gonna be the fastest Pokemon on the field. It's gonna be a, a real issue. Uh, to try and deal with, but as soon as this Thunderous decides, you know what, I want to fire off uh, a Max Lightning or a Wild Charge, it's going to be able to deal with that pretty comfortably and completely ignore any of those ability activations or the berries as well, so uh, those Defiant boosts could start to hurt. There's the Fiery Wrath, good damage down on both, uh, and a Weakness Policy boost given over. Victor's been giving over a lot of boosts to Marcus in this game. 
Yeah, the Defiant boost, now the weakness policy boost, and here comes the max airstream, which, whoa! Galarian Moltres just gets one hit knocked down right there! That's why you can't be handing over Defiant boosts. You can't let that happen, and, and the one of the key selling points of Galarian Moltres is takes a hit pretty well and then, you know, is able to activate Berserk, get its berry in, and go from there. Uh, of course, the Thunderous is going to get knocked out for its troubles, uh, but now the Metagross is sat there with a weakness policy boost. That is a crazy boost to just hand over, and Marcus Pro feeling pretty good about his options here. So a, a quick trade of Pokemon in this one, uh, both the Dynamax users from these players. Uh, but now, I mean, it's a lot riding, I think, on Metagross. Um, but it's going to be partnered up with the Incineroar for a bit, which can slow the game down a little bit. Slow it down with a fake out, and maybe let this Metagross just continue to do good work. It doesn't have to do much to knock out Stack Attacker. And its only real concern right now is going to be the Urshifu, which is at least uh, going to have to be slowed down for a turn with a potential fake out from Incineroar. Yeah, the fake out is going to be a lot of pressure onto Victor's Pokemon. Stack Attack is already really low here. So one single attack coming in from the Metagross or this Incineroar could be enough. But we did see a Beast Boost get activated, so there is a little bit of a defense boost coming in from Stack Attacka. And its speed is a little bit different now because of that one max Airstream boost that we saw before from that Galarian Moltres. That makes uh, this game so close at the end. I think this game, you know, all the Pokemon have taken a decent amount of damage, so they're not exactly the, you know, the easiest to keep on the field. Uh, and both trainers are going to have to be so cautious. Look, there's not a single Pokemon left over 50% health. What a really good position to be in. Um, and the targeting here is going to be so important, making sure you don't waste a single attack. Uh, a single attack into a Protect could spell disaster and end the run at the final hurdle for either of these players here in the last round of the loser's bracket. So uh, you see the players definitely mulling it over. Uh, definitely no yeah. rush when it comes to what they're doing here and, and making sure it's perfect targeting. Uh, we obviously know where Marcus has thrown his moves. We're looking at it from his side of things. But Victor's, uh, you've got to think that they've both taken their time on this turn and, and the clock isn't going to be worrying them at that point. Uh, the Protect from Urshifu, mm -hmm. uh, very cautious. Double Protect from both of these Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So this gives Victor a little bit of information on kind of what Marcus wants to do. Also, it really stops this fake out from being a huge factor in this game. Buys Victor just a little bit more time to figure out the game plan. Right, I, I really like that as well. And, and um, the big thing here is that like, Marcus can't protect, you know, particularly in the face of the Urshifu. But don't forget, I mean, he was getting boosts from, from the airstreams earlier and, and trying to kind of work things around uh, that way a little bit better. So this Metagross uh, should be a huge threat towards the end of the game. Uh, and it just needs to pick its target correctly. That's the really big thing here is, is as long as it targets things down properly, it's going to be in a solid position to, to wrap up this game. Um, and that's, that's just important for... Uh, a Pokemon like Metagross that, you know, usually struggles a little bit with speed, um, but it's just got to make sure that the targeting's spot on. I don't think anything's low enough to be particularly threatened by an Aqua Jet yet, so it can't even ignore that. And there's Metagross taking advantage of its boost, making sure it goes nice and early on. Yeah, Stomping Tantrum going to be enough to knock out Urshifu here, and it will be the Incineroar moving next with Flare Blitz. There it is. Is this going to be enough to knock it out? And yes, it is going to be. Stack Attack gets knocked out here, and Marcus takes the series and moves on to the Global Finals. Yeah, I think that Double Protector may have been uh, a little bit cautious. I mean, not much you can do, particularly uh, when the boosts are there, and that Metagross is taking advantage, saying, well, I got to sit next to Thunderous for a turn, and that was that was really helpful for me. Now I'm the fastest thing on the field. I got my weakness policy boost. I'm able to just wrap up this game. So uh, really, uh, in, in all three games,